At the Lilla G. Frederick Pilot Middle School in Dorchester, Massachusetts, we are given the chance to observe the effective use of technology to assist the learning of physically disabled students. We're really blessed to have Molly Dallaire as a teacher here because she's very creative, very thoughtful, really resourceful, and has been able to really access things that were already available uh, for low or no cost and bring them into her classroom to meet a need. There are various things I've used on the Mac that are built in. One of the wonderful things that we use daily is text-to-speech. I, I can't say enough about that feature. As much as it, has, it does have various voices and various speeds, but we use it every day, whether it's a quiz that I've posted on my website or whether it's writing a text and they're just editing and listening to it, or whether they're reading a book or researching facts about a, a person that we're studying. It is a huge tool for students. Once there was an elderly widow, Chen Ma, who lived with her only son inside a forest in the Shanxi province. An another tool we use on the Mac is a zooming in feature. You're able to very easily, um, with two push and control and zooming in with your, with your fingers, you're able to zoom in on any text, any picture, anything, make the screen automatically bigger for um, anybody who have visual challenges. We also use the mouse. You're able to make the mouse larger so you can e more easily follow what you're clicking on. We also can use an on-screen keyboard, which is very, very important for students who are unable to physically type. Molly Dallaire accesses the on-screen keyboard on her Apple laptop by first going to System Preferences and clicking on Languages and Text. She then selects Input Sources and makes sure Keyboard and Character Viewer is selected, as well as Show Input Menu in Menu Bar. Then she goes to the menu bar and clicks on Show Keyboard Viewer. The on-screen keyboard allows her to input characters in just the same way she would with a physical keyboard. It's been a great tool for students that we use. They use their mouse or joystick or whatever it may be to then type using the on-screen keyboard. So an example of this is a student who has come into the classroom um, first year here at the Frederick. The majority of her movement is done by her head. So you take a student like this who you can see has so many great skills and has a lot to say and is very energetic and has a great spirit within her. And We had to look for various tools in order to get to those, those strengths. What physical um, strengths does she have? Her hands, fingers. We are looking to use the laptops that we have, the Mac laptops, to not only use them as a great resource, but to give them that independence that she so greatly needs. So currently with the student, we use a on-screen keyboard that is again built into the Mac. We also use a joystick that she uses to scan the letters on the keyboard and a head switch to click and to choose the different letters. She also uses that to get on the internet. Again, she'll scan with her joystick, the icon to get onto Firefox, click it, and then she can then maneuver through the websites. Now we can set her up on the laptop, give her her tools, the switch, the joystick, and walk away and she can work independently, which is the first time she's ever been able to do anything independently. When using the RASKITS program, students come to their laptop and I've already logged them in so they find their name, click on their name, and they, a book at their level comes up. Actually, a variety of books come up at their level that they can choose. They listen to the story, they can repeat it as many times as they would like, either page, any word, and a story is read to them. Anna looked out her grandmother's window as dark clouds piled up in the sky. Then they push on the icon that has for them to read it themselves. So that is when they can choose to either read it out loud, read it quietly, or record themselves. I read with my mom. Can you sit down? I read with my dad. They um, tend to like to record themselves. So they'll record themselves reading the book, and then afterwards they will take a quiz. And the quiz is usually approximately five or so questions with multiple choice. And, you, and sometimes, depending on your level, it is even accompanied by visuals. Each question, if clicked on, will be read to them. Each answer, if clicked on, can be read as well. Who did the girl not read to? Her cat. That's right. So the students can, for those who struggle, again, with the reading or what the question is saying, it, all those elements are there. 
and, and if they get a certain amount right, then it is checked off, all three things are checked off, and once they've read all of the books in their level, they can then go to the next level. The webspiration we use in our classroom to, with brainstorming activities. Many times the students have great ideas in, in writing and just like any other student in any other situation, you need to brainstorm first before you put your writing together in an articulate way. So we're using a great tool called Webspiration in our classroom which uses visuals and pictures um, to not only much more illustrate your ideas but to connect what the information that you're trying to demonstrate in a more appropriate way. So we've also used inspiration as a summarizing activity. What are some things that you've learned and just kind of brainstorming some things you learned and articulate what the understanding that they want to show. Pick a word and then you're going to put the rhyming word next to it. Okay, so let's start off with the first one. What word would you like to pick first? The smart board is used in my classroom in various elements for students who have physical challenges who sometimes struggle with vision of looking at the screen, struggle with manipulating things on the screen on a laptop. Here we have snow or sky. Snow. So can you put the rhyming word on this side? The smart board not only takes it to the next level in the sense of visibility, but then it also gives them a little bit more physical interaction, gross motor skill. That is their strength versus their fine motor. So the smart board, you're able to manipulate items that you couldn't do. I mean, some students struggle with taking um, index cards and moving those around. Again, fine motor skills versus a smart board, which is much more gross motor, where students can manipulate, they can categorize, match. We even use it as a way in which to project information and for students to then type or add to information that we've already researched or worked on as a group or in small groups. So smart board can be used in a variety of ways and we really enjoy um, the students really are motivated by it as well because it's a fun and different tool. It's incredibly important that all of our children have the resources they need to be successful. In our school we have 650 children, so we have 650 programs. And we have to figure out the combination of supports and resources and skills needed to help that child be successful. And so we have a whatever it takes attitude and that means that we have to go out and find the right resources. The children are beautiful and talented and creative and they deserve the opportunity.